Swarovski crystals add gorgeous sparkle to any project, so it's no surprise when I polled my viewers for what they wanted in new videos, many asked for ways to use Swarovskis with clay. Today I have for you eight creative ways you can do just that. Hey there creative people, Sandy here. Welcome to another video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So here I have in front of me mostly Swarovski Crystal Rivolis. And a Rivoli is simply this shape with the pointed back. They don't have to be round. They can be oval, like these little purple ones. They can be triangles, like this one. It can even be butterfly shape. That is tiny, but it is still a Crystal Rivoli. I also have a couple of flat backs here with me because you can use these as well in many of the same applications. But I'm going to show you eight different ways to use your Swarovski crystals and mostly the Rivolis with polymer clay and other clay. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The first on my list of ways to showcase Swarovski Crystal Rivolis is to use them as flower centers. This is a polymer clay cane I made a while ago and used it, just pressed the petals into a ball and then pressed the crystal right into the center. It's just a gorgeous accent. This would make a lovely pendant or a brooch. So anytime you're looking for something for a flower center, think about using your crystals because they just bring so much to the project. Another awesome way to use Swarovski crystals is as the eyes of creatures such as birds or insects or dragons. That would be fantastic. This little embroidered owl pendant is made from the Polymer Clay Adventure class 2018 by Galina Herstova. So I can't share with you how to make this, but I I really enjoyed her class. If you haven't, if you like polymer clay and you haven't tried the polymer clay adventure, you'll learn so many different things. This was a fun project and I especially love just that little bit of sparkle you get from the Swarovski crystals. These could be Rivolis, they are flat backs, but they certainly could be. You could use bigger ones too, the ones that Galena made her owl from were quite a bit bigger than these. So anytime you're making some kind of a creature, especially sort of a magical creature, or really any, think about using crystals as the eyes. You may have heard of soutache embroidery, but did you know that you can do faux soutache embroidery with polymer clay? And Swarovski crystals make fantastic focal points for when you're doing that. You use an extruder and extrude strands of clay. Now this was the first time I ever tried this technique and I think I probably needed to make my strands a little bit thinner. They're a bit chunky for the scale, but you get the idea that you can use them. You make a base sheet of clay and then use these strands, wrap them around crystals, beads, pearls, whatever you like to make faux soutache. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go on YouTube. There are lots of tutorials. This is one way of doing it. Another way that I've seen is with extruded rectangular strips that are stacked together and then wrapped the same way these round pieces are. And it gives just a different effect. But anytime you want to do something like this, a Swarovski crystal is going to add a lot to the project. So consider doing faux soutache embroidery and making crystals as the focal points. Creating mandalas is popular these days and a Swarovski crystal makes a gorgeous center to a mandala. Again, this one is not a flat. This one has a flat back. It's a pendant. Actually, somewhere on here there's a hole for stringing, but I just kind of ignored it. You could see what I did was I rolled, let's pop one off, little rice-shaped bits of clay and then put them around the mandala, kind of like the prongs of a ring setting. And you could continue to add these mandala style, add different shapes. One of the things I thought would be would look nice is to to kind of get these to connect better to the crystal is to take something like a leather embossing stamp or a leather stamp, I guess, and you can just go ahead and 
press those in, get a design in, and then you can continue to build around this just like you were making any other mandala except that the center is a crystal. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing something like this or like this is the thickness of your crystal. So what I have here is a fairly thick sheet of clay because this is a Rivoli so it's got that deep back. So I rolled two layers on a number two on my pasta machine to get this deep sheet of clay that this will sit in down into it. If for some reason you don't want to do that, what you can do is just take a little bit of clay and I'll just demonstrate on this sheet. So like this really isn't deep enough for this one. See if I can press this. That is pressed all the way down to my tile and you can see that it's still sticking up some. Make a little like support for your crystal. Like a little donut, a little ring around it. And now that's fully supported. You can see that clay kind of oozing out. So I know that the whole thing is fully supported and then you can continue with your project. In a similar way to the mandalas and the faux soutache, you could do faux bead embroidery. Now this is a real piece of bead embroidery that I've done where I've sewn on the beads. I've got a Swarovski crystal down here. And if you've ever seen those, you can have tons and tons of them in the project. But you could do it in a very similar way to the faux soutache. And often what I've seen done, and of course you have to do this row by row, is you can take a tool and make lines like this to make it look like the rows of bead embroidery. You could also do what I did here, which is a very fiddly, tedious process, but you can make little itty bitty balls of clay. If you want to get those all exactly the same size, these are pretty close, use extruded strands of clay so you know that they are exactly the same size, and then use a tool like a Marksit to mark them so that you can cut them all to be exactly the same size. So you can make yourself some faux bead embroidery. So what do we have so far? We have flower centers, the eyes of animals, a focal point in polymer clay soutache, faux soutache, the center of a mandala, or focals in faux bead embroidery. All creative ways to use crystals with clay. So that's five. Here's another idea, which is using several to create a composition for a pendant or a box lid. On the screen, I have a screenshot of a Pinterest search, and it's interesting, what turns up mostly is Chris Capono, also known as Mandarin Moon's work with this. She does a beautiful job of incorporating crystals, glass, pebbles, all kinds of mixed media into her compositions having fun adding them here and there, swirling the clay around them, adding textures and shapes and dots, just kind of letting your imagination go wild. This is a tile I made quite a few years ago using one of Chris's classes at the Polymer Clay Adventure. Now I didn't use Swarovski crystals on this, but I think you can get the idea that instead of these glass pebbles, I certainly could have. And here are a couple other dragon scenes. This is Fergus and Marsley. And you can see that there are several bits of crystal beads. I used the crystals on his wings and as flower centers. So anytime you're putting something together in clay, you can feel free to add Swarovski crystals of any sort. Polymer clay bakes at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Glass doesn't begin to melt until over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so there are no worries about doing any harm whatsoever to your glass pieces. So creating box lids, incorporating them into a scene, that's number six and seven. The final idea I have for you is not using polymer clay, but using epoxy clay. 
This is a nice little kit I got from Art Beads. It has several different colors of clay with the hardener. So here's a pair of earrings I made. You may recognize these little bezels. So with the crystal clay, I mixed up a, actually I mixed up, I think, some of this dark green and some blue and got a turquoise color that I like. So don't feel like you have to use the colors as they come out of the package. Just make sure that you mix your A colors together. Mix all of that and get that just the way you want before you add B, because once you add B, then it starts to harden. So get all your colors mixed first, and remember to only mix half as much as you need, because you'll be adding the same amount again in part B. But these are some of those turquoise crystals, and just embedded in little earring bezels. A rhinestone pickup tool is awesome for this. These I didn't do in any particular pattern, I just tried to fill as much of the space as I could. But here's a tip for you. Practice first with polymer clay. This is polymer clay, so I'm going to pop these off. You could, this will do two things for you. It will let you know, let you design your layout so that you are happy with it and also it will help you to mix up the correct amount of clay. So I mixed up some polymer clay and it's funny you have to keep reducing and reducing and reducing until you finally have the right amount because you always think you need more than you do. Especially with the pave style you actually need even less because as you're pressing things in if you put the right amount to begin with, it'll end up overfilled, so you actually have to underfill it to begin with. So you just I just started with a smooth ball. Use the pickup tool to add your pieces. If you're filling a whole surface like this, don't worry about pressing them in until you're done. It's actually really great when you're filling a whole surface like this, because once you have it all filled, then you can kind of go back in and reshape it all. I think this is hardened past the point of me reshaping it much, but you get the idea. Here's a bigger project. Now this one is still polymer clay. You can see I used one of the bigger rivoles here, and I used some of the couple of the butterfly rivoles, and what an amazing ring this could be. I've filled it with polymer clay and tested my whole thing. I used some Swarovski crystal flat backs, but again they still could be Rivoli's, and also a few nail art crystals, which you can buy, I believe, in Swarovski. So I have my pattern all tested out here, and what I would do is snap a picture of this with my phone, so I have a guide to go by. Take it all apart, put all of the pieces like in a a dish like this. I love these dishes. <laughs> Maybe have a piece of scrap clay as a base to hold your ring while you're working on it. Then take the clay out of the ring, roll it up in a ball, cut it in half, and that is how much of your colored clay you're going to mix. Once you get the color you want, then add an equal amount of the B hardener and that way you will have the exact right amount of clay to fill your bezel. They also give you gloves with this kit, so make sure to use them because it's, it's very sticky and not good to have drying in your fingers. So pave style, there you have it. Eight different ways of using clay with Swarovski crystals. All of them are, of course, full of possibilities for creativity. I would love to hear your ideas because I am certain there are far more out there than I can possibly think of. Happy creating. Bye-bye.